Hey, it's Joseph here, and you are here to hear all about Enscape 3.2 update. Enscape has sponsored this video for me to cover the cool new features. And I am quite excited as the list of new features included in this release is quite long, so let's get right into it. The first feature that I want to go over is the dynamic asset placement. We always have liked Enscape's ever-growing asset library. However, if you are using softwares like Revit, you might have noticed a few limitations. For other entourages such as cars and people which are quite fixed size, it doesn't really matter. However, for something like a planter where you might want to have a few different scales, it's a bit troubling as you probably do not want to end up with all all of them same sizes and the normal scale tool isn't really available for you and there is a way to adjust the scales but it is a type parameter therefore if you were to change this it causes all of them to change so every time you want to change its size you're gonna have to go to the edit type and make sure you duplicate the type and from there you change this height parameter which is the scale so that you have one different type that's available for you and then you can select the other ones to be the same type that you just have created this was all due to the specific family type and its parameters that are available in Revit and for those of you who cares all of Enscape's assets are brought in as planting but thanks to the 3.2 update Enscape kicks again to solve the problem up here is the view management and the next to that is the asset library, L for short. And then you will see a new dialog appears on your left and then you will be shown with the familiar assets. And by the way, all of the following functions are available on other applications that Enscape also works in. So whilst you might not have as heavy limitation as Revit, some of Enscape's offerings are very useful regardless of where you work. Just stick with me, I promise you'll find something that's going to be useful for your own tool. So as you can see, there are several buttons that you can play with, so let me go over them quickly. First, with the select tool, you can highlight an asset that you would like to modify and then go to translate or T for short. I'd say this is more of a move tool so you can highlight certain axes and then move them along certain type of axis that you want to modify with or select this green circle so that you can rotate them on Y axis. And also you can change all of them manually with a specific measurement down below here along with the rotation that's available. And you can also reset the rotation if you would like to. And then you can simply apply the changes. And below the translate tool, there is a rotate button. Although you cannot currently use this button to rotate things in Revit but you can still scale with this button, scale or G for short. Just activate the tool, then drag things along the axis, or again, you can manually type the specific size that you would like. And once you are done, you can just go ahead and apply the changes. And just so you know, this is basically creating a new unique type for you automatically and you can see another type has appeared over here and also if you just highlight the object and then if you would like to delete it then you can also click on this button that is over here or delete key then you'll be able to make this change if you want to delete multiple assets at the same time you can hold down the control key and then select multiple assets and then hit delete key or this button again and then those will be removed one cool thing about all of these things are the fact that whilst you are making all of these modification it highlights the fact that there are ongoing asset changes therefore all of those changes don't really apply to Revit slowing you further down so until you decide what to do with it such as apply all the changes or discard all and those changes will not apply to Revit making your workflow that much faster or just hit escape key once and this question will come up and then you can just discard and leave and all of those changes will not apply. Okay, let's go further with other buttons that are available over here. On top, you will also see ways to search or choose categories or tags. 
but you can also choose to keep all of the library offline to take up a little bit of your storage and boost the loading speed a bit. So all of these are cool addition to the current workflow, but actually I saved the best part till the last. The two buttons that are here are the ones that I did not cover yet and allow me to demonstrate. You can pick any sort of category that you would like, but for example, let's go ahead and choose the vegetation category. This one says Bush 004 Tiny. And by default, you will be placing a single element. So I can just click on the screen like so. And once I am done, I can just click on apply changes. And then you'll see that those have been added to the Revit side. And you'll also see this on the render screen of Enscape. But you can also click on multi asset placement. You can place multiple assets with a specific shape. Down here is currently a rectangle. So I can just click on something like this and then increase the length and then also increase the width like so. Or I prefer more of a circular area and then select a circular area. And I think that it will be more suitable for this specific area that I'm trying to place the multiple assets in. I can move that a little bit or increase the size if I would like to. And once you have highlighted the area, you can select the assets that you would like to place in this circle. I can either choose those three or perhaps these three. Depending on the size of the area, you may or may not see some new ones that are showing up here. You can kind of see this white cloud back there. And I can certainly increase the area to have more assets that shows up in the area, but I can just kind of reduce the area as I only want this area to be covered. But I can also increase the density so that I have a bit more assets that are showing up on the scene. And I can change the distribution from random to jitter or uniform. However, in my case, I want to keep it as random. So I just kept it as random. And there's a checkbox for random rotation if I would wish to do that. However, I have a case of this asset that is showing up in the middle of the house. So I want to regenerate. And if I regenerate, that's going to kind of regenerate with the randomness. It is really cool as you might have noticed that it is omitting the part that it already has the assets place. So it is kind of avoiding that and then putting in the area that it did not receive any assets yet. So you can choose to preview the selected area if you would like to or press the regenerate button. As you might see, some of the placement is more suitable for the scene. So I kind of like this one. So let's stop there and then confirm the placement. And then you can apply those changes. All right, we quickly got much better looking plants. Okay, now you can go off and enjoy the version 3.2 but we're just getting started with all the added features. If you render a lot of 360 panoramas like me, you'll definitely appreciate this feature. You can set up multiple scenes for panoramas. I have already set up some of the panoramic views in here, so I can click on them to kind of show you what they look like in the Enscape screen. And for all of those scenes, you can actually tie the visual preset to them. So I have set all of them up properly. Then hit the familiar batch render button. Check all the views that you would like to render. Then with this down arrow, you can select to render the panoramas and then it will generate all of those automatically. Now you can take a short break or go make yourself a coffee whilst your machine and Enscape are hard at working. The next feature that I want to cover is also related to the previous. They have updated the upload management UI. Once you have finished the batch rendering, you can click on this upload management. You'll notice that the overall UI looks slightly different yet familiar since it looks more consistent to the rest of Enscape overall look. As you hover over the image, you'll see that you'll be able to look to either sides or change your view to that specific location and all the information will be highlighted to the next of the image. Or you can simply choose this icon to upload it to the cloud. 
And as it was highlighted on the previous version, you can manage all the scenes that you have rendered and have them in a single directory as a single link. And it is a great way to share multiple panoramas easily with your client. You can simply create mono panorama gallery and choose the images that you would like to bundle up. Start editing and now you are in this gallery mode. And just to go over the UI a little bit, you can hover over here and then choose specific image to go to or have them reordered as you like or delete them within your gallery. But you might have spotted a new button that is on the top left corner. And once you press that, then you'll be asked to activate the tour mode. Once you do that, I'm going to choose show all waypoints and then confirm that and you'll see that all of those areas that you have bundled up with will be able to highlight and jump to those positions. This is a very intuitive way to tour your area. So this is gonna be massively useful for any of your clients to view your project. And don't forget to save this. You can either save as or save. And once you confirm that you want to save, this is going to be my panorama gallery and then I can save that up and then once I confirm I can come out of it and then as you refresh the screen then you'll see this panorama gallery that's shown up here and I can simply share options and then have this panorama gallery link that is available for you I can simply copy this or generate a link and send it to a specific email with the aforementioned features, you can certainly enjoy uploading many different panoramas. But as you get multiple uploads online, keeping up with all the latest version of renders can quickly get out of your hands. So Enscape has built a new feature, Upload Update, to help manage the uploads. After you have rendered the panorama, you have the choice of either uploading or replacing the uploaded panorama. When you choose to replace, you'll be presented with this window and pick a view that is based on the project name or the screen name or matching specific view. So in my case, I'll be replacing with this one and then I'll choose next. And then Skate will double confirm with you whether this one is the correct one or not. And apparently it is not the right one. So I can back off and then choose the right one. I believe it is actually this one and that is the same scene as you can see and then replace that after a few moments this message will appear and then i can close and then you'll see that the one has been replaced will no longer have a little cloud icon on the top right hand corner instead this one has the icon now so you can go ahead and delete if you would like the next one up is the green building assets and materials. As always, they have expanded their library. As you load the asset library in the new section of the categories, you will see that the new assets this time around are focused on sustainable architecture and green buildings. Over 250 assets are added, including trees, plants, flowers, and more. Around 50 new people assets are included as well. And to continue the theme, if you open Enscape's material library, you will see over 50 materials added to the new category. You can find materials such as solar panels, recycled plastics, various earth and soils. Just scroll through the list and familiarize yourselves. The next one is a bit technical. Ray trace sun shadows in real time view. Enscape now shows ray trace sun shadows in real time view. If you have very keen eyes, you might have noticed that the rendered images shadows were slightly better quality than the viewer. This was because in the still images, all the sun shadows were ray traced. But now Enscape has the viewer improved on the shadow accuracy in the live presentations and the walkthroughs. And this is not even rendered. This is just a live viewer that I'm moving around. And as always, it looks so good. The geometry update toggle. 
in Revit, Archicad, and Vectorworks. You can toggle a switch in the view management tab to disable reloading of the geometry when switching the views. You can see it down here, export geometry, deactivate the geometry export when switching views belonging to the same project to reduce the loading time. The other honorable mentions are the fact that AMD GPUs can now support Vulkan ray tracing. I actually have one AMD GPU to test this out, so stay tuned for later. Windows 11 support, and Enscape has future proof by supporting Windows 11. I have not made this switch yet, but it is good to know that they support it. Enscape also have their own official release video, and you will be able to find this link in the description as well as all the details of this release and also the link for the 14-day trial of Enscape. And if you have enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.